So after leaving the first episode of Mayunaka Punch, I thought to myself, this is surprising, because usually in any new anime season, once you leave the first episode of all the shows you're watching, I find myself having one to maybe three shows that I look at and I say, okay, that's anime of the season potential. And this was a show that gave me that vibe. I was like, this is definitely one of the more unique, creative, and quite literally a punch to the face in a unique way. But the interesting thing about the summer anime season is that there's like five to six shows I did that with, where I'm like, okay, there's a lot that are going to be competing for that anime of the season title. Now, if you ask the overall masses, most people won't even put this show in the same category. Hell, most people won't even try the first episode because it's not the big buzz talked about show. But it did make me happy to see some bigger YouTubers, you know, hype this one up, you know, just on social media and stuff, because I think this show legitimately has a shot to be one of, if not the best of the season. It all depends on execution, but after leaving the second episode, they completely deviated away from expectations. I left, and I'm sure many people left episode one thinking, okay, that's really interesting. We have a group of vampires that are gonna help a human girl make videos, flying, turning into bats, all the supernatural stuff you could think of. They're going to have like literal movie-like videos be made to get to a million subscribers. And by the end of the second episode, they have to give up on having the vampire side of things, else Mama Deer is going to come knocking. So now we're back to square one, not knowing what their videos are going to look like. So it's a little frightening because now I'm entering episode three. Episode three could be completely boring, generic garbage for all I know. But the fact that this show is bold enough to do something truly unique in both episodes 1 and 2, how could I not say this has a shot at not being anime of the season? Because it absolutely does. Now, of course, I have full live reactions over on Patreon. If you want to see my full and good thought to any of these episodes, it's going to be over there exclusively. So, second episode? Probably a little bit better than the first. Like, they're at least on the same level, but I think it's slightly more interesting because you really have an idea of what the cast is going to be like. And the cast is bigger than I thought, man. Yeah, I knew about Little Lolly Maid, and I knew about Live and Misaki and all them, but then Fu gets brought in, and then there's like, oh, here's this, like, I don't know, big sister coming in, delivering some blood and shaking us down, talking about Mama. So it's like, it's a big-ass cast of characters and very unique personalities. The thing is, is where we leave off in Episode 2 is actually a pretty bold plot development now it's not gonna last of course and what i mean is the girl whose entire purpose is to make a channel with a million subscribers basically the the dream that she had with her two friends when they initially started their channel uh she is literally traumatized of hate and i i can't say i blame her i'm not saying there's anything wrong with that but she could have 10 positive comments and one hate is the thing that sticks out and that's the thing like hate will always stick with you Easier, you can have a hundred people say how great you are, and if one person tells you to go drop dead, I mean, that's the one that's going to stick out, of course. But the interesting thing is that with the new channel that they ended up making, she's the producer. She's the one handling the thumbnails, the editing, the every, like, even probably video ideas, and the people on camera are the three vampires in this household. And at some point, probably episode six, seven, eight, that's my guesstimate range of when this will happen she will be brought into the camera and there is going to be some overcoming trauma moments for her and you can see a lot of potential with characterization which is great because episode one if you really look at episode one you could think oh this is going to be a very slapstick ridiculous over the top show maybe there'll be a couple of moments that are a little better on characterization but no like legitimately episode two flexed quite literally that this is a show with proper character writing and it's still fun i mean look at all the adventures they had in vampire mode i mean it's really funny because if we, like, if someone randomly dropped a video today of flying around, turning into bats, doing all these crazy things, my natural response will be it's a deep fake or it's really insanely edited. Mr. Beast got a hold of some really talented editors, you know, like, that's, that's basically going to be my response. But it would absolutely blow up because your production level is next level, not knowing that people can, well, quite literally turn into bats and do all these crazy things and it makes sense that the head bitch in charge vampire is saying no 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 i thought what was going to happen was that we were going to just push back against the vampire and there'd be some drama there we'd quickly get to like i i don't know what their actual numbers were but they were like within two weeks ma their first video like within like a couple of days was a hundred thousand views like their analytics were insane so I thought, okay, maybe like four or five, they'll have a million subs, and then there'll be a new thing. Because right now the goal is like, hey, 
if you get to me to a million, you can suck me dry bone-wise. Might be a little more sucking involved, but it's probably not appropriate for YouTube. But, you know, it's, it's interesting what they're doing. And I think the vibe of, like, coming over and then you have <laughs> her just in bat form because she's blood dehydrated. And then she's getting a nibble. And then it's like, okay, how is that fair, actually? Like, maybe I shouldn't side with a vampire, but it's like, if you're going to give, like, the little lolly maid a taste of your blood... Like, you should probably also give, you know, the main girl who has the pact with you a little taste as well, but, you know, I guess, I guess fair isn't fair in this world, it is what it is. But I really liked this episode. It was charming, and really, you know, for me, it did exactly what I was initially expecting, only to pull the rug from underneath and say, actually, we're going in new directions. I still think vampire stuff could pop up, maybe it'll be a little more tastefully hidden, potentially, but yes, it is actually, it's... It's kind of like entering new territory. I know I only have known this show for a couple of episodes, but I really thought what I was going to expect was that, you know, it was going to be a lot of vampire shenanigans. And now, who knows what they're going to make? I, it, it's kind of like, it, it's weird to say because, like I said, I've only seen the show for two episodes. But it's almost like watching your favorite show for many seasons and then they completely shift the style into a new, bold, interesting direction. But it's like, okay, but I'm, I'm used to the familiar. Only two episodes. But when you have the vampire cast, you expect it's all going to be like, what type of wacky wild rise can we do? And it'll be interesting to see how they're going to be able to hide their vampire ways, but also clearly that will slowly get introduced, I'm sure, and the type of drama that could pop up. This episode was bold. It was probably one of the boldest episodes I've seen this season, because really, no one's going to walk in expecting that by the end of the second episode, the vampire stuff has to stop. I, I really think that. And if so you think they're just going to power through or temporarily stop. And maybe they will only temporarily stop. But as it stands, we're leaving this episode with daily life of three normal girls at face value with a girl who desperately wants to be on camera, traumatized by all the hate and criticism, and just wants to get to a million subs and basically die. Because, I mean, she's literally saying a vampire can suck her dry. Will she actually die from it? No, because they're clearly going to become friends, if not more. But you get my point. I'm always a big fan of the show that is clearly doing something different while also being wonderfully produced, and honestly, in PA Works do I trust. They are just one of the most consistent and unique studios in the anime field, and they've been that way for the past decade, if not longer. Let me know what you thought of this episode, because for me, I was sold after last week. I am thrilled to be here after episode two, and I really think this has a shot. It's one of the handful of shows that really is desperately trying to be anime of the season, but if you agree or disagree, let me know down below. Be sure to leave a like if you enjoyed, subscribe if you're new around here, of course, ring that bell, and like I mentioned, we got those full live reactions over on Patreon, and hey, why over there, I'll also give you a video shout out. So today, we got Dominic Hamby, Conrad Sosin, Sovereign, Antonio Rose, and we also have Tobias Reinholds. I appreciate the support, everyone. Please take care. Y'all have a good one.